What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today we meditate on the actual passion of Christ for Monday, Thursday. There is so much to talk about on this Thursday before the crucifixion that pastors ought never run out of material to preach on. But for this specific meditation on Monday, Thursday, or Mandate Thursday, or Holy Saturday, uh, we're going to work from the theme, Washed and Ready for Supper. That is the theme uh, of the day. Now, why would the theme of the day for Monday, Thursday be Washed and Ready for Supper? Well, uh, we have Jesus earnestly desiring to celebrate this Passover with his disciples. This Passover, this pivotal meal for God's people, recalling how God ordered the slaughtering of a lamb and the smearing of that lamb's blood on the lintel and posts of the doors so that death itself would pass over those marked by the blood of the lamb. This lamb that was slain that God's people were instructed to eat the flesh of. That, that night before their redemption, before their exodus from Egypt. And we know that on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Moses and Elijah were there with Christ, they were talking about his exodus, the great act of redemption for God's people, which the Exodus, a very real event in human history, was but a type and foreshadow of what Christ was going to do on the cross to rescue his people from the great Pharaoh, from Satan himself. And so Jesus, greatly desiring to eat this meal. Jesus, a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, we learn from the book of Hebrews. Melchizedek who offered bread and wine. Jesus would likewise use bread and wine not to institute a new covenant, a new conditional contract with his people, but a new testament. You see, a covenant is kind of contractual on both sides, and God's people clearly failed in that covenant. God, in Christ, on this Thursday night, institutes a new testament, his last will and testament for his people. Not a new covenant, a new testament. And he, a, a, a testament, a last will and testament is legally binding and unchangeable when the person who instigates it dies. Jesus' last will and testament before he dies, before he seals his will and his testament for us. That night, in that upper room, while they are having supper, Jesus, the creator of the universe, the word made flesh, the king of heaven, the ultimate judge stoops down to one more time live out those words that he did not come to be served, but to serve. The king of heaven stoops down and does, in the culture of the time, the most despicable job imaginable. He washes his disciples' feet. What a, a scandal. What an insult that the king of glory would wash the feet. And the only one who had the audacity to say anything was Peter. No, you're not washing my sheet. And then these insanely baptismal words from Jesus, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. If we're not reading those words and recalling our baptism, there is something very wrong with us. And then Peter, well, not just my feet, Lord, as some weary traveler who needs just to have his feet washed, who has, you know, bathed otherwise, my head and my whole body also. But Jesus' washing is sufficient. We, too, have, like the disciples, already received the full forgiveness of Christ in his full and thorough washing, which uh, we read about in the book of Ephesians, that baptism is his washing by water 
and the word, as Ephesians says. So he has already fully washed us, heart, soul, and mind, in baptism. And we recall our baptism by making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit through prayer and repentance and remembrance that we are baptized. It's not we've been baptized. When I got married, my wedding day wasn't the day I got married and now I got married. I am married. Likewise with baptism. The day of our baptism doesn't mean we're baptized. It means we are baptized with Jesus' own washing. And we recall that washing like a a foot washing when we've otherwise regularly bathed, daily maintenance, daily uh, repentance, and absolution. The best and only way to remember and recall your baptism, that the old Adam in us should by daily repentance and contrition be drowned, and that a new man likewise should daily rise. This is how we are washed. And now, like the disciples, ready for supper, ready for that meal that Jesus wanted for so long to institute. And just like the Exodus, where the the blood of the lamb was spilt and the people ate the lamb, we too, as a part of the New Testament, eat the flesh of the lamb. And in stark contrast to the Old Covenant that says the life is in the blood, don't drink the blood, in the New Testament, the life is in the blood. We drink the blood of the Lamb. And we know this from Jesus' own words. Take this and eat it. This is my body. Take this and drink it. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Is means is and always only ever means is and any analogy that we could come up with comparing this to that. Jesus is the door. Yes, that's an analogy. He's not literally a door, but the analogy is not on the word is. The word is, even in an analogy, still means is. What is this bread? As we, re- we sing in the hymn, Christ's body risen from the dead. This bread we break, this life we take was crushed to pay for our release. Oh, taste and see, the Lord is peace. This sign and seal of the New Testament, this authenticating marker of the true church, where the words of Christ are preached in their purity and in their truth and where the sacraments are rightly administered, there is the true church on earth of which Christ says the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And Jesus says, whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood in the Gospel of John has life. The, 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 the Israelites' fathers drank manna in, 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 in the wilderness and they died. But Jesus is the true bread from heaven, and whoever eats of this bread shall never die. Signed, sealed, delivered at the cross, this testament is unchangeable because Jesus instituted this as his last will and testament, and it was sealed upon his death. The for you the baptismal regeneration and the sustaining of your soul until that day when he comes back with trumpets blaring to raise you from the dead and you, having partaken in the seal of this New Testament, will be raised from the dead. This is the promise that Jesus gives the night before he is betrayed into the hands of sinful men. The night before he goes to the cross, the king of the universe not only physically stoops down to serve in the most humble means possible of the day, washing of feet. He gives, he gives in these final moments. What a God that we have that in his final moments still can only think to serve and to give. And now, We go to dark Gethsemane to watch with him one bitter hour. He will be betrayed into the hands of sinners. 
with a kiss. He will be beaten. He will be falsely accused. He will be tried in an illegal trial. The suffering of Christ at the thought of the cross in his human flesh breaks the blood vessels in his skin from stress, and he sweats great drops of blood, blood loss and dehydration in the human body of Christ, who is at the same time God, weakened already and still, for the joy set before him marches for you to hang on your cross and to rest in your tomb. God bless your meditation on this holy Thursday. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.